The new three Silicon M1 variants are out, the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, and the Mac Mini. But for today, we'll be reviewing the M1 MacBook Air. I've been using this for three to four days now, and I can say this has the biggest leap in terms of performance, thermals, and battery life against all of its predecessors. If you're wondering if this base model M1 MacBook Air can handle your everyday activities, then stick around to find out more. This is Ralph, and you're watching Zap Studios. By the way guys, I got this from Dr. Gadgets. They are a 100% legit online store and they have the most competitive prices in the Philippine market. So they sell from phones to laptops to accessories. So kung gusto nyo makatipid, check out Dr. Gadgets on Facebook. Links on the description down below. As mentioned in my intro earlier, uh, I've been using this for 3 to 4 days now. So there are currently uh, 3 colors. You have the space gray, the gold, and the silver. The MacBook itself, tabi muna natin to. Let's check what else is included. Power cable, USB Type C. We have paperworks, and of course, hindi mawawala ang Apple stickers. And yes, guys, unlike the new iPhone series, may kasama tong power brick. You get a USB Type C 30 watts power brick. Okay, now for the MacBook itself. Now let's check the outer appearance first. It's identical sa MacBook Air 2020. So kung nakabili kayo nun, it's totally the same. Walang pinagbago. We have the Apple logo on top, which doesn't glow unlike the older models. We have the 3.5mm audio jack on the right side, while we have only two USB Type-C on the left side. You can use the Thunderbolt 3 or the USB 3.1 second gen. So ano ba pagkakaiba nitong dalawa na to? Both of them have the same USB Type-C head. Ang pinagkaiba lang nila is the transferring protocols. To keep it simple, iba sila ng transferring speed. If you're gonna use the Thunderbolt 3, you have a maximum of 40 gigs per second transfer speed. While if you're gonna use the USB 3.1 second gen, only up to 10 gigs per second. By the way, you can still use your USB Type-A, but you need an adapter like this. So pag buas natin to, meron siyang new feature na parang sa phone natin na rise to wake. So once we open this, automatic na siya mag go on. So opening the MacBook Air with one hand is easy. That's it. Unlike other laptops, mahirap siya buksan ng isang kamay lang kasi ayan, sumasabay siya. The screen is a retina display. 13.3 inch diagonal LED backlit with IPS technology. 2560 by 1600 native resolution at 227 pixels per inch. This also has a brightness of 400 nits, wide color P3, and true tone technology. Okay, now for the webcam. It's still the same 720p and we were kind of hoping na 1080p na siya kasi uso ngayon ang work from home and also mga online meetings like Zoom meetings and Skype meetings. We can also see the speaker grills on both sides and here's a sample of the sound quality. Everything else is still the same except for a few arrangement lang sa top part. And here on the lower left function button, may dinagdag siyang dedicated emoji button. There's almost no difference on the outer appearance and here on the keyboards, but there's a huge difference inside this laptop. These new MacBooks are powered by Apple's very own M1 silicon chip. This is the base model with the 8-core CPU, 7-core GPU, and 16-core neural engine. 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of internal SSD storage. For me, it's not worth it anymore kung mag-upgrade kayo to 1 tera or 2 tera kasi napakalaki ng idadagdag na price. So for me, kumuha na lang kayo ng external SSD. This M1 processor is what separates this machine from all of its previous model and competitors. Based on the benchmark test, this M1 model surpasses the Intel Air 2020 by 33% on a single core while 58% on the multi-core. Based on the data provided, makikita natin na ang layo ng performance ng M1 MacBook Air compared sa mga lumang MacBook Airs. While kung i-compare naman natin to sa other old Mac models, we can see that the M1 MacBook Air outperforms even the high-end 27-inch iMac 2020, which is priced at 135,000 pesos, and even the 13-inch Intel MacBook Pro 2020 that is priced at 116,990 pesos. This is the main reason kung bakit ko nare-review yung M1 MacBook Air instead of the M1 MacBook Pro. The Pro model can handle heavy applications and programs better, kaya nga siya tinawag na Pro. But data shows that the M1 MacBook Air isn't that far in terms of performance and speed to the M1 MacBook Pro anymore. If you are a previous MacBook Air user, you will know the boundaries and limits on what the MacBook Air can do. I personally have a 13-inch 2015 MacBook Air model. And up to this date, it still can do basic stuff such as browsing the web, 
Zoom meetings, Word and Excel without any problem. And based on my experience, yes, you can edit and render videos but only barely. Now, there are a lot of times when the application crashes because it gets too heavy, especially when you're using DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, or Adobe Premiere. And when you slide through the timeline, there are a lot of skip frames which makes it really, really difficult to edit. I can't even put effects or transitions because this happens. But for this M1 MacBook Air, it's totally different. So now let's test the video rendering speeds on this machine. Both are running DaVinci Resolve 16 with the same video clips. The MacBook Air 2015 finished at 9 minutes and 44 seconds, while the M1 finished at roughly 1 minute and 24 seconds only. So even when rendering, this M1 MacBook Air was so silent. Unlike the old model na maririg natin yung ingay while processing. Thermal also shows that the old MacBook topped at 45.2 degrees, while the M1 MacBook Air is only at 33.4 degrees. And that's how efficient this M1 chipset is in power consumption, thus creating only minimal heat. Clarify ko lang guys, if you're running heavy tasks or heavy applications or video rendering, it does get warm at the bottom part, pero hindi mainit. Just warm. Other Intel laptops, sobrang init talaga niya. Now, for one of the most important things on a laptop is its battery life. Now, MacBook is claiming that this MacBook Air M1 can stay powered up to 15 hours of wireless web browsing and up to 18 hours of movie playback. This is 6 hours more than the previous MacBook Air. From my personal experience, yes, napaaganda ng battery life nito. Nung first time ko to binuksan, the battery was at 56%. So I immediately installed apps, linked my iCloud, browsed Facebook and YouTube, even tried DaVinci Resolve kung gagana ba to sa bagong ARM chipset ng MacBook Air M1. And at roughly 3 a.m., it was still at 42%. In fact guys, I've been editing since early this morning, 11am at 94% using DaVinci Resolve and now it's 8.35pm and I'm at 35%. Another update regarding the battery of this M1 MacBook Air, earlier 8pm something, I'm still at 35% but now it's already 1.24am and our battery is at 13%. So I've been doing continuous editing using DaVinci. Uh, makikita nyo rin na nag-update ako ngayon. Nag-download din ako ng other stuff earlier such as Final Cut Pro, Microsoft Office, nag-YouTube din ako, nag-Facebook, and etc. And we still have battery left. And also, another thing maganda sa laptop na to is hindi bumamaba ang CPU performance niya just because it's running on battery. Meaning, hindi siya naka-plug sa outlet. For those who are saying that some apps isn't supported by the M1 chips right now, we have Rosetta for that. So, Rosetta is an emulator for x86 supported softwares. Una siya magpa-pop up or magpa-prompt siya na you have to install Rosetta kapag nag-install kayo ng x86 software. And once na ma-install mo na siya, now you can use softwares that are not yet programmed for the M1 ARM. So final thoughts, this laptop is another breakthrough for Apple and sana magpatuloy lang to and hopefully other manufacturers also follow. Now, for those who are planning to buy their first MacBooks or for those who wants to upgrade, uh, then tempted kayo dun sa binibigay na discount ng mga Intel-based MacBooks, for me, invest a little more sa mga M1-based MacBooks na lang. Uh, in terms of value, sobrang magde-depreciate na yung prices ng mga Intel MacBooks kasi sobrang layo ng performance nila. And if next time you want to resell it, sobrang baba na ng prices na yun, and it's not worth it. For those who can't decide if they're gonna get either the Air or the Pro, you have to look at on what are you going to use this for. If you're gonna use this for schooling, for basic presentations, for Word, for Excel, for, for web browsing, for playing a little games, basic video editing, basic photo editing, this is more than enough. Now, if you're a professional naman na your job is to take photos talaga, to video edits talaga, photo edits talaga, then go for the Pro or the Mac Mini. So that's it for this video and hopefully nakatulong kami sa inyo. Kung nagustuhan nyo tong video nito, please like and subscribe to our channel. We will also be giving away one cell phone to one lucky subscriber. So be sure that you are subscribed to our channel and stay tuned for the mechanics on our future videos. This is Ralph and thank you for watching Zap Studios.